we began to see time as an arrow in a universe that's always changing. The 19th century physicist Ludwig Boltzmann found a law he believed governed the flight of time's arrow. Entropy, based on the second law of thermodynamics, holds that states of disorder tend to increase. From neat orderly starting points, the elements, living things, the earth, the sun, the galaxy, are all headed eventually to states of high entropy or disorder. Nature fights this inevitable disintegration by constantly reassembling matter and energy into lower states of entropy in cycles of death and rebirth. Will entropy someday win the battle and put the brakes on time's arrow? Or will time stubbornly keep moving forward? We are observers and pawns in this cosmic conflict. We seek mastery of time's workings even as the clock ticks down to our own certain end. Our windows into the nature of time are the mechanisms we use to chart and measure a changing universe. From the mechanical clocks of old to the decay of radioactive elements or telescopes that measure the speed of distant objects. Our lives move in sync with the 24-hour day, the time it takes the Earth to rotate once. Well, it's actually 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 4.1 seconds, if you're judging by the stars, not the sun. Earth got its spin at the time of its birth, from the bombardment of rocks and dust that formed it. But it's gradually losing it to drag from the moon's gravity. That's why, in the time of the dinosaurs, a year was 370 days, and why we have to add a leap second to our clocks about every 18 months. In a few hundred million years, we'll gain a whole hour. The day-night cycle is so reliable that it has come to regulate our internal chemistry. The fading rays of the sun, picked up by our retinas, set our so-called circadian rhythms in motion. That's when our brains begin to secrete melatonin, a hormone that tells our bodies to get ready for sleep. Finally, in the light of morning, the flow of melatonin stops. Our blood pressure spikes, body temperature and heart rate rise, as we move out into the world. Our days and our lives are short in cosmic terms. But with our minds, we have learned to follow time's trail out to longer and longer intervals. We know from precise measurements that the Earth goes around the Sun every 365.2563666 days. Much of the solar energy that hits our planet is reflected back to space or absorbed by dust and clouds. The rest sets our planet in motion. You can see it in the annual melting and refreezing of ice at the poles, in the ebb and flow of heat in the tropical oceans. or seasonal cycles of chlorophyll production in plants on land and at sea. These cycles are embedded in still longer Earth cycles. Ocean currents, for example, are thought to make complete cycles ranging from 4 to around 16 centuries. Moving out in time, as the Earth rotates on its axis, it makes a series of interlocking wobbles called Milankovitch cycles. They have been blamed for the onset of ice ages about every 100,000 years. Then there's the carbon cycle, 
Plants capture it from the air or the sea. It finds its way into soils or ocean sediments as plants decay or as waste passes out of the food chain. It can take a volcanic explosion or a dramatic lowering of sea levels to release this carbon back into the air, often after millions of years. The processes that shape a planet like ours play only the smallest of roles in the evolution of the universe. So to glimpse time's broader arcs, we must look to cycles that govern the larger cosmos. The rain